praise you for that. I'm going to ask you, Father, just to do works, dear Lord, that we don't comprehend, that we can't understand, that we can't see right now. Lord, save souls this week. May it be a revival missions conference. May there be lives touched. May there be young couples and young families and young children, teenagers, called to the mission field Amen. through this thing, Father. Work, Amen. dear Lord God, in all of them, and give yourself the honor and the glory, I pray. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 You know, I, my dad was mentioning this <coughs> afternoon that sometimes... I have this spontaneous way, and I do believe that the Spirit is in that. And uh, can I just tell you, outside of a couple of things I need to tell you personally, I want us to take time today before we get started and do prayer time for our mission. And if you come down and do that with me in just a moment, prepare your heart, prepare your mind to come down with me in just a moment and kneel perhaps or stand, or gather together, and let's just pray together about this thing, okay, about this tonight, all right, because so, listen, so vital is it, what the Lord is wanting to do, I know, he's wanting to do some marvelous work in our church, our young people are getting ready for this, I mean, they're getting psyched about these kinds of things, uh, some of them Okay, where are the kids that were here earlier? I saw Jeremiah. Is he here tonight? Where is a couple other of the kids? I see Tommy's out as well. Is Tom out? Must be with him. Okay, in any case, I want to get them excited about this week. I think, I'm going to tell you this openly, I think these kids are called to ministry. Because I see already certain gifts in them that seem to uh, push in that direction. So the gifts and callings of God are given without repentance. Amen. And we need to stay out of the way for sure and let the Lord minister among those people. Will you do something for me? If you'll just stand, those of you who will sing or uh, uh, pray with me, will you just stand and come and let's pray together. And those of you who want to, I'll ask my father if he'd start. And then Ken Jones, if you'd pray. And then just after that, anybody that will. Hey, if this goes on for a while, I don't care. Let's just pray. Let's pray. Won't you come? And let's pray together. Dad, find us. Our Father, the last thing you said when you were in your son and he was coming back to heaven was going to all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. Yeah. Go to Judea and Samaria and the ends of the earth. Amen. You said, send the light. Send the gospel light to the ends of the earth. That's our commission. We're not here to just wait for the coming of Jesus. Right. We're here to spread the gospel hey. around the world. This local church, this First Baptist Church of Seaford, Delaware, has that commission. Yeah. Every person who is a part of this church, a part of this congregation, whether they're young or whether they're old or whether they're middle-aged, whether they're women or whether they're men, whether they're children, we all have that commission. Yeah. We are all called to send the gospel around the world. Right. And whatever part of it we need to be in, let us be in it. Yeah. Whether it's with giving, whether it's with 
Brother Ken. Our Father, our hearts are. Lord, I'm excited because, Lord, you are doing something special. You're calling people to the mission field. Amen. It may be young people, and it may be some middle, middle age, it might be some older. That's yes. right. But Lord, we believe that you are in the middle of this. We can feel your spirit, Lord. The word to the world. And that's what we've been doing for our church. The word to the world. Yes. And Father, we just ask you to work in our hearts, our lives, each and every one of us. We have a ministry. Each person in this church has a ministry to do. I don't call it a job. It's a ministry. So, Lord, work in our hearts and our lives. And, Lord, help us invigorize. Lord, that we would be. Lord, do something with us in a special way. Wake us up. Lord, move us out of our lethargy. Amen. And sure. help us to, Lord, move into a different ideology, a different uh, vital situation with you, Lord, that yes. we're doing something spiritual. For you. Yes. Yes. And Lord, this belief that you're moving. Help us. Lord, do something with us. Amen. Move, Father. Wake Amen. us up. Each and every person that we would understand the moving of your spirit. And that we would understand that ministry in a church, missions. I know one time years ago, I was in a missionary church, the Christian Missionary Alliance. And Lord, you call me yes. to support me. Yes. I never was called to go to a mission field, but Lord, it's been very tender to my heart Amen. that you're working in the hearts and lives of people. Oh, Lord. Praise your name. Thank you, Lord. And we love you, Lord. We love you tonight. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to move, move. upon our hearts, open our eyes, our ears, and open our hearts and help us, Lord, to understand what needs to done, that yes. this would be one of the best conferences yes. that this church has ever had. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. Amen. Open my heart. Do anything Amen. that, the Lord, you want to do. I'm here. I just ask you, Lord, to bless in a special way. Amen. Say so. Say that. Move upon our hearts and lives and help us to encourage these missionaries to help us be encouraged. Yes. yes. And we'll give you the praise for all Amen. that you do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Just stay right where you're at. Sing with me.
As you're making your way back to your seat, I know it's unusual. We're going to mess up the whole schedule. Go to video again. You are the Christ. But just sing out. Okay. You are the Christ. Let's glorify you.
that are coming that we will learn more of how yes. and what they do on the mission field. Yes. yes. It'd be, yes. be to edify our souls to see how these missionaries do and what they do, the time they put into serving you, Lord, to bring
bring others to know you, to start new churches, Lord. The more churches serve, Lord, the better it is for you, Lord, to just edify you. And, Lord, it just be our mission conference, that it be just a yes. abundant and glorious day, Lord, for you, the week, to have just everyone here worshiping you and just, um, it's just going to be a wonderful time, Lord, and we just, <laughs> we just pray, you know. Yes, sir. It, it's just going to be glorious. I'm just, I, I can't imagine what this week will be like going to be a fantastic mission conference. Yes. We know you're in charge of it all, Lord. Yes. Thank you in Jesus' name. Father, I want to thank you for bringing us all together, Lord, for the day. Yes. You know, I just pray, Lord, that you uh, help us to, uh, to realize, Lord, uh, that uh, it's a privilege to be able to give um, yes, your will, Lord. Um, the God that created the earth, the universe, everything, is letting us participate in his will. That's um hey, yeah. thank you, Lord. Um I'm privileged, Lord. We're, we're privileged. And I just pray, Lord, that you also help us to realize, Lord, that you that you're the one that provides for us. You're the one that gives us the money that we have. It's because of you, Lord, that uh, every day we have food on our table for us. Right. And uh, also Lord help us to remember Lord that the reason why we're we're uh, providing for these missionaries is because uh Lord they're preaching the gospel Lord. Um, <coughs> And uh, they need uh, they need help, Lord. Um, yeah. I just pray that you help us, Lord, to, to be there for them, Lord. Um, yes. And just please be with the confidence, Lord, because uh, uh, we need to hear from you, Lord. Um, please preach the truth to them, Lord. And help us, Lord, to be attentive, Lord. And I just pray that your will be done, Lord. And, and please just bring conviction where conviction is needed. And, uh, and just stir us up, Lord, please. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Yes. We know not what you want us to do. Right. Sometimes we just have to adopt faith. Yes. Yes. Lord, I, I've seen men that come and go. True men. Father, that's a missionary self. You know, everybody says that mission started home. Well, that's not so. so. That's terrible, Lord. But we can't forget what we have here. Yeah. We've got so sunshine here also. Yeah. It's not just
leads our life. That Christ help us, Lord. Yes. Oh, Lord, help us. These young people. If we don't go out amongst them. That's right. And let them know that we love them. That's right. That we want to hug them and hold them and cherish their, their being. Yes. Who's going to do it? That's right. Who's going to be a leader? Who's going out? Mm -hmm. Father God, <coughs> I've seen some wonderful things this year. Working with the migrants. Mm -hmm. How many smiling faces I saw. many of us are willing to go out there and be a servant? Yes. How many, how many, how many is willing to serve those that are downtrodden? They're there. And Father, I, I, I that you send
have a seat, if you will. Mission opportunities come in all kinds of ways. Remember when my <coughs> sister-in-law died, my brother was barely 38, 30 years old. <coughs> wow. I came off the mission field to minister to my brother. <laughs> and for a month, I spent time with him. Just about every night, I heard him cry. I'm here to tell you, God's not all about religion. He's all about 
What is the missions conference? A missions conference, I think, was best said by Dr. Clifford Clark. I'm not sure where he got it from, but I wouldn't doubt it if he thought it up himself when he said, a missions conference is the church having a week-long business meeting to decide the fate of the world. Amen. Amen. That's a good one. Amen. Amen. So what will be my part in deciding the fate of the world during that week? What will be my part in praying to the almighty God of heaven to pour down his spirit upon all flesh? May he do his work in an abundant way. May this missions conference blow our minds. God do some special things that we've never thought of before, perhaps. He, he, yes. <coughs> Brother Mike Willicke, uh missions conference, and his idea was, he's one of those analytical kind of guys. He's a of Baptist world mission. And Brother Mike Willicke actually sent out a great, massive volunteer survey to all the missionaries, pastors, to leaders here and there. And the best things I took away from that, I was going to read you a whole bunch of it, and the Lord, by the Holy Spirit's power, made my phone stop. So praise his name for that. I have no battery left. <laughs> and I actually reached out and touched my button and prepared for that part. And guess what I got? That. That's what I got. So here's what I wrote down about the things that Brother Willick has said. Number one, uh, the best missions conferences missionaries have ever been to and participated in were where pastoral interaction with the missionaries was prime. Amen. Pastoral interaction with the missionaries was prime. In other words, every leader of this church, whether it's the senior pastor or associate pastors or members of the 12 or any Sunday school teacher or anybody that's involved in any way yeah. in this church, ought to be involved in the lives of those missionaries, Amen. not just while they're here that week, but all the time. Yeah, that's right. Writing to them, encouraging yes. them, telling them that you're praying for them, and make it genuine and extra personal time. Yes, yes sir. You understand? Yeah today and that the missionary actually said he said when the pastor's fake he said if he doesn't really want to be with me he'll be like uh-huh uh-huh yeah uh-huh hold on just a minute yeah okay what, what was that again oh yeah yeah what, were, what was your missionary field again see he'll know if we're being serious right. so may God help us to truly and honestly Think about those missionaries, their needs, and understand that the vital part of missions is actually loving people. Amen. Loving Amen. people. I don't mean faking loving people, but <clears throat> honestly, truly reaching out and saying, I care about you. Amen. Is there something I can do? If I need to drive two hours to give you some groceries and a track and, and maybe help you find a job or whatever is involved in doing that. The thing he wrote was good, or, good interaction with the people. <laughs> All right, so number one, pastoral interaction was prime. Second, good interaction with the people. That means planned activities together. That week, I'm going to get these things I want to hand them out to you. That week, there's a few very important activities. That eating is an important activity. Yes. <laughs> oh, yes. I love to eat. And if I got a missionary sitting in front of me, he can tell me all about the food they eat there. I might not feel so appetizing. <laughs> but, you know, it's a good thing to have those missionaries sitting on the other side too. So I'm going to start this on this side. And if you want to sign up to bring something on one of these days, do it. You'll see there's an international meal on October the 11th, on October the 12th. Sandwiches and subs that night, Tuesday, October 13th. Tacos and enchilada meal. That's two <laughs> taco, baby. I'm down. On Wednesday, pizza meal. And we'll have a great time with food preparation and serving as well. And that's on the other side. How many of you have been a part of preparing food in the church? Slip your hand up. Wow, look at that. Yeah, just about half the congregation. Have you had fun in that kitchen? Haven't we had some crazy times? I'll tell you what, when the pastor comes by, we just throw food at him. Okay, anyway. <laughs> sign up.
God also below here for taking the mariners for a meal, taking the Hodges for a meal, taking Joel Deku for a meal, getting involved in the shopping outing, which is on Tuesday, October the 13th, the shopping outing, getting involved in the tour outing, which is going around and touring the area on that Wednesday, October the 14th. Get involved in the soul winning activity on Wednesday, October the 14th, and the afternoon on Monday. We'll be spending some personal time, me personally, me alone, not you guys, just me alone. With those when you say, now, Pastor, that's awfully selfish, yes, but for me to fulfill that role yeah. of time with yeah. them and making them understand how important they are, I must get away alone with them and sit yeah. down and actually talk with them. And yeah. explain to them what a good retirement program is. Explain to them why it's a good thing to have an emergency system in place in case they have to get men back out of the country. Explain to them the need for having all kinds of resources on the field. Explain the difference between taking a pallet on the field or taking a full container. That's the kind of thing I will be doing with them on that Monday. But you get to sign up and go shopping with them. That's a whole lot better than what I do. Man. And then you guys also on that Wednesday can sign up for the tour outing, okay? You say, what does that cost? There's no cost. No cost. You just bring money if you want to help them shop. If you want to give them some money for shopping. We've also set aside funds for them to be able to shop. And we've also got an idea of this week Filling out sheets. We're going to give them sheets of wish lists that they might have, things that they might want, that they're needing on the mission field or wanting on the mission field, and we can have a tangible part in fulfilling yeah. those needs. That's good. And I'm going to tell you something. The missions giving, I think this year is going to go right through the roof again. Yeah. Just like it did last year, it doubled. I, I believe that the Lord will continue to do that. Now, my friends, as we look off into the future, you'll see also that these two other sign-up sheets are exactly what you're looking at there, except I'm going to switch them, okay? So the meals for this side, okay, and the activity on this side. So I already started the meal sheet on this side, activity on that side. So I just switched it, and you can sign up for any one of those things. I want you to know, Wednesday, there was a big commotion here at the church. How many of you were here on Wednesday? All right. A bunch of our new teenagers came in, and they were so excited about having church that they forgot they were in church, you see. No, we as a church, continuing to see that need of reaching out to our community, you know what? Again, let me say it this way. It takes a village. Amen. It takes a village. You say, Pastor... Yeah, there was some running around and some things that were going on at the 6, 6, 15, 6, 30 time. I didn't know what to do. That's all my fault. All of it. Every bit of it. And one of the things I did wrong was that I haven't completely taught our church it takes a village. And so one of those things I want to make sure of is if you see a teenager running around, you have every right. To go and beat them up. No, I don't mean that. I don't mean that. <laughs> you have every right to go and uh, softly talk with them and say, hey, come here and sit down with me. What is it that's got you so excited tonight? You know, maybe we should eat a banana instead of candy the next time or something. You know, whatever it is to explain to them how much you love them and how important it is for us together to do that. But I want to tell you, I know it was my fault. I was not defined in some specific things. I needed to tell some of our leaders while Thomas and I were gone. And I want to apologize to you for that. Okay. Uh, but I also want you to know you have every right to stop it when you see them. You have every right to sit them down next to you and explain some things to you. I guarantee you this. Gary can't do it all alone. That's all right. right. Uh, you know, Tim can't do it all alone. Some of these guys are really good leaders, but they just can't do it all alone. So you make sure you understand that principle and take it unto yourself. Okay, the third thing. Okay, so first, pastoral interaction. Second, Good interaction with people. Third, good interaction with youth and 
and teens and children, youth in general, which I mean college age, young families, teens and children. Why do you think a missionary wants to interact with teens? Can you give me an idea? My, they're the future. They are the future. Mm -hmm. They're the ones we've got to influence to see the needs around them. They may not be the guy who calls them to a mission field position, but oh, friends, it's like Clark said. He said this, not everyone is called to the foreign mission field, but everyone ought to struggle with the possibility. And then the next logical question is, Jeremiah, are you struggling with going to the mission field? David, are you struggling with the possibility? Brad, are you struggling That's good. with the possibility yes, sir. of going to the mission field? Yeah. That's good. Say, what are you talking about? I've been a farmer for 500 years. <laughs> and you know God's not going to call you tomorrow. That's right. With all the knowledge you have, it would be used. You know what? Remember, a mission that he knew God hadn't called him to go. And he vocalized that to his wife. We're not called to do that. I'll pray about it, but we're not called to do that. That's not so. And way back in 1995, he started his missions career to raise money to go to Cuba. You remember that part? <laughs> yeah, that was me. <laughs> and I spent the next 20 years in Cuba, but in Uruguay, South America, ministrando a los hispanos. No es así, Jesús. Porque son increíbles importantes. No es así. So, my friend, what? Increíblemente, yes, I've lost some of my Spanish. Don't make me feel bad. Pastoral <laughs> <laughs> interaction, good interaction with the people, good interaction with youth, teens and children. Number four, two-way interaction, letting the missionary minister to you as well as you ministering to them. Let me say it again. Two-way interaction, letting the missionary minister to you. You know what the greatest thing for a missionary to do is? Is when you go to them, Jeffrey, listen to this, Oscar, and you say to them, you already have prepared several questions to ask them about things they can teach you. Not stuff they know about their field. Not things that they understand about wherever they're going or the people and all that. No, 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 no. Things that they can teach you about Christ. Amen. The missionaries that are coming in want to have an opportunity, Jeremiah, to talk to you about Jesus. Amen. They want to have an opportunity, Kai, to know if you are engaged in him. Would you do something for me for the last part of the verse? I'm going to preach to you. I want you to grab your Bible and go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. I realize this is an unusual evening. But can I tell you something I think is very important? That harvest starts on October the 10th at 3 o'clock. And when we start that missions conference, there's going to be a whole lot of people coming into our church. Now let me go through, before I get into this message, and tell you just one very important aspect of what's going on in our church. We have experienced what I believe to be a low level. I realize it's a low level. But I believe for two years we've experienced a low level revival. I believe that going from a group of 25, 30, come on a regular basis, to seeing sometimes as many as 230 in a, in a week's time. Amen. Look God. Amen. And I believe that the Lord is blessed in some unique ways. Right now, people who want to become members or have recently become members are Cindy and Will right here. I know Lord and Jeffrey have struggled with this, and you're still looking and praying about it. What are your thoughts about it? You're still Wondering about you're oh you're up on it. Good. Praise the Lord. Amen. Kristen Wagner and her four children. Jeremiah, Justin, Kai, and Leanne, just right back here. Jakesha and her kids, her two girls, and me. And then uh, uh Ke Ke Stephen Carroll and Gail Buck, who just started last week. 
reality. Audrey Grant, Lynn Howell, who is here tonight also. Sherry Emmels, who's uh, been here uh, in recent days, fantastic. Mark and Don and Matt Malone, you know that we're here just this morning. 28 people right now Amen. are already, in within the last week, or on the verge of becoming members of this church. Amen. Do you understand what God is doing here? I'll tell you what God is doing. What the free spirit of God ministers upon people. He takes his precious word and he applies it to the heart. And it's powerful, my Amen. friend. Look with me, if you will. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 and verse 1. Finally, my brethren, pray for us. How is it that this missions conference is going to get started? It's going to get started with three little words, isn't it? Pray, pray, pray. Tell me if that's not the case. We've got to be in prayer that the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified even as it is with you. If you'll flip over just real quick to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. I want you to actually flip over if you will, and take the time to look at this. First Corinthians chapter, I think it's important that you actually see the words and let them burn into your, listen now, let them burn into your cranium, all right? Let them go deep down into your heart. The word of God says this, but God hath chosen the foolish things, verse 27. The foolish things, First Corinthians chapter 1. He's chosen the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. God has chosen the weak things of this world to confound the things which are mighty. And base things of the world that are despised hath God chosen. Yea, and things which are not to bring to naught things that are. And often we'll say, but that individual doesn't have a really good way of speaking. There's some that can do that. But Pastor, I can't lead a people. I can't lead a people. How would you ever expect me to lead a people? I don't expect you to do a thing. I expect the Holy Spirit of God to come upon you and the Lord to move in a special way and the Word of God to be powerful and strong in you. And regardless of what clay you're made of, the Holy Spirit will take you and make you something. Special like you've never yes, known. Amen. And bless his holy name for verse 18. If you just go back into verse 18. The preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. Yep. But unto us which are saved, my friends, it is the power of God. So Amen. three little words I want you to let them burn into your mind. The power of God. Yes, it does not matter to me if you're an HVAC guy or or somebody that does some other kind of You know, God can take you and make you one of the most powerful preachers that ever lived in this earth. How does he do it? Because it's not you. It's the preaching of the cross, which is to you and I, the power of God. Amen. And you go back to our main text. I'll finish with you tonight. I told you it would be just a short message. I really feel that it's important to prepare us, not just in prayer, but also in an explanation of what a missions conference is. And what is a missions conference? A missions conference is a week-long business meeting of the church to determine what is the fate of the world. Yes, that's, the yeah, right. that's the truth. Second Thessalonians. 3 and verse 2 goes on and it says this that we may be delivered from unreasonable men for all men have not faith I think this is coming alive right now in these riots like I've never seen before mm -hmm. this is not a black or white issue That's this right. is about socialism versus, versus other kinds of thinking this is about some kind of this idea of getting rid of God out of our lives yep. very, very well. That was the Marxist idea to begin with. Was to get rid of God completely and somehow take away people's freedom to do what they have the ability to do. What the church does is just the opposite. We tell you, you are free. <laughs> you are free. You never feel bound. 
The word of God is not bound, That's and right. you are not bound, Amen. and you can go out and make something of yourself. Amen. Whether that be to take care of yourself through 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 doing a, a big business and starting a huge uh, business and, and, and a bunch of people and evangelizing in that way, or whether that just simply mean being an old country bumpkin preacher like myself. Oh my. It's given us freedom to do what we ought to do. But what we need to do is be praying, first of all, that the Word has free course. And yes. second of all, that God will deliver us from unreasonable men. Yes. yes. May God deliver us from unreasonable people. And I'm praying that at least 51% of our country is reasonable, for goodness yes. sake. Because, yes. man, November the 3rd is coming. Yes. Yes. Verse 3 goes on. That's right. But the Lord who shall establish you and keep you from evil? I thank him. Because, oh, if there were dependence on us, we'd be done. Wouldn't you say? This church would fold up its doors. Everything would be done. I just this last week had the opportunity to visit another church. And as I walked into that church, I remembered a few years back walking in there and seeing 400 people on a Wednesday night. And I walked in there this time, and there were 52. Oh, my God. How sad. I said to a person I know real well, what happened? He said, what did happen? I don't have a lot to say about that. Some people think maybe I should, but I don't have a lot to say about that. All I say is this. I've got a job to do, and there's a stupid virus that's going to keep me from it. Amen. I've got to get out and witness and tell people about Christ and keep on going and keep on evangelizing. Nothing in the Word of God that says, hey, there's going to be a five month period of time where you just got to stop for a while. Nobody ever said that in my Bible. That's right. Up until the last day when Jesus Christ comes back. I've got a job to do. Amen. Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. My heart breaks for that congregation. And again, I have nothing to say about them or other churches that make different choices. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. And we will do it forever. And we'll do it all the time. And we'll do it on weekends as well as during the week. And we'll do it at night as well as in the morning. And it won't matter to me what's going on. Romans chapter 10 and verse 14. Without, is that right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Romans 10 and verse 14. Put it up there with you. Yeah. Romans 10 verse How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? How shall they believe in whom they have not heard? How shall they hear without a preacher? Oh, dear one. Be a preacher for God's sake. Hey, Be hey, a preacher. Hey, Time hey. is short. The Lord is coming back. Hey. My friends, make it so that now your heart is right with God so that when they gets here, you'll be so white hot and ready to go, we just see all the sheepers come to Jesus. Will you bow your head and close your eyes? My friends,